It's almost time to visit our last stop on our field trip today, a beautiful overlook from the caldera's southwestern rim. This will be a short Google Air flight, but before departing, let's appreciate the view from our starting point. From this overlook of San Diego Canyon, we can see that Bandelier Tuff is the capping layer on both sides of the canyon. And we can also see that the yellow upper Bandelier Tuff is on top of the orange lower Bandelier Tuff, especially on the west rim of the canyon. Appreciate that after the Valles Caldera eruption, there was no San Diego Canyon. It was just part of the extensive Tuff Plateau that defined the southwestern Jemez Mountains. San Diego Canyon is on the Colorado Plateau, so sedimentary rocks along the bottom of the canyon correlate with some of the layers at the Grand Canyon dating back over 300 million years ago. As we begin our flight to stop five, we will head down canyon a bit before turning to the west, flying above the Tuff Plateau. As we continue turning and start to head north, you will observe small canyons that have carved deep enough to expose the lower bandolier tuff. Turning now back to the east, the caldera margin comes into view along with the ring fracture volcano San Antonio. Next comes the resurgent dome Redondo, composed primarily of upper bandolier tuff. And as we settle down for our view of the caldera from the southwest rim, the Banco Benito lava flow is also clear on the south side of Redondo. Okay, we've made it to our last stop. We've traveled to the southwest rim of the Valles Caldera. I'm actually standing on Tuff. This is the upper bandolier Tuff right here. So this, these are pyroclastic flows that are really close from the source where they were coming out of the caldera. And off to my south and off to my west, broad flat plateaus made up of this upper bandolier tuff. And again, it's loaded with crystals. If you uh, break off a piece of this rock or just look on the surface around here, uh, lots and lots of these, these perfect quartz crystals and feldspar sanidine crystals. So anyway, we are, are on the southwest rim of the caldera. Uh, off in the distance, the highest peak, that's the resurgent dome. That's uh, Redondo, and as you come off the dome on the right side, uh, much of that of the resurgent dome was burned in a fire, a fire just a few years ago. But as you come down and hit a valley and then start rising again to the right, there's a treed plateau. That's the Banco Benito lava flow. So that's from we were, what we were standing on in the last stop. And essentially, the Banco Benito lava flow uh, was erupted from uh, a little bit higher off in the distance, and it flowed around the southern base of Redondo and makes up that, that kind of low mesa, tree-covered mesa. All right, I think the last thing I want to do is to take a look at the geologic map uh, this is essentially the Smith, Bailey, and Ross geologic map, although colors have been changed. And just talk a little bit more, an overview of what we've seen and what the main volcanic rocks are that make up this geologic map of the Jemez Mountains. So on this geologic map, of course, here is the Valles Caldera, the circular feature, the ring fracture volcanoes, all are, are colored in red. And here's the northern ring fracture volcanoes. This is San Antonio Mountain. Uh, this here is South Mountain. Those both came out about a half million years ago. And here is the crater El Cajete. That's the source of this youngest last eruption, the Banco Benito lava flow right there that wraps around the southwest flank of the resurgent dome. So this area in the middle is the resurgent dome of the Valles Caldera. Uh, once again, this light orange color, those represent the pyroclastic flow tuff deposits, just what I'm sitting on here, that came out during the eruption of the Valles Caldera. And the dark orange color that you see in canyons that have been carved into the tuff plateau, 
Those are from the older caldera, the Toledo caldera eruption 1.6 million years ago. So again, about 350,000 years separates these two remarkably similar eruptions, basically in the same place. Uh, of course, the Valles caldera eruption is going to obliterate much of the Toledo caldera. So we don't know too much about what the Toledo caldera looked like inside since the younger eruption is going to obliterate it. Um, the Chacoma formation is represented by this green color here and makes up the highest peaks in the northeastern Jemez Mountains. And most of these are volcanoes that erupted between three and five million years ago. And it's easy to see that prior to the two caldera eruptions, uh, there used to be more of this green color that should connect this point here on the rim to that point on the rim. So the two calderas, the Toledo and the Valles caldera, have kind of removed those Chacoma volcanoes in what we call the Toledo embayment right there. Uh, the black lines on this map represent faults. This aqua blue color, they represent sedimentary rocks of the Colorado Plateau. So um, the western side of the Valles caldera, all the volcanic rocks were emplaced on much, much older sedimentary rocks of the Colorado Plateau, going back even over 300 million years ago. And those are shown in this aqua color. So the eastern half of the Valles caldera, you'll notice you don't see any more of the aqua color on this side, because that's, that's because we're in the Rio Grande Rift. So these faults that are trending from south to north and then curve to the northeast, that represents the western margin of the Rio Grande Rift. Outside of the rift, we have these old rocks, sedimentary rocks of the Colorado Plateau. In the rift, those older rocks have been dropped down and they are buried by younger sediments shown here in yellow, the yellow color. Uh, sediments have been filling in the rift in the last 30 million years. Um, so, so it's kind of interesting to have the Valles caldera. Western part is on the Colorado Plateau. Eastern part is actually in the rift. Before we take our final Google Air flight, let me take just a minute to debunk a few of the many myths about the Valles caldera. And there have been many tall tales. I can remember the highway sign at the Valle Grande pullout back in the 1980s, claiming that the Valles was the largest volcanic crater in the world. That was a time when there was not very good communication between scientists and information provided to the general public. In fact, most volcanologists considered the Valles caldera to be a small to medium-sized caldera compared to known calderas around the world. Even in New Mexico, there were at least 10 caldera eruptions that were larger, especially comparing the volume of magma erupted. Most of these are located in the Gila Mountains. They are also on the order of 30 million years old, and as you might expect, after 30 million years of erosion, these calderas don't look so good. A giant caldera north of Taos, New Mexico, erupted 25 million years ago, termed the Cuesta caldera, and erupted at least twice the volume of the Valles caldera. Although the Valles caldera may not compare in size to these fellow New Mexican calderas, its geological youth and preservation make it special, not to mention the beauty of the bandolier tuff, which often erodes to form amazing shapes and textures. Another myth that has persisted over the decades is that prior to the Valles eruption, there was a Mount Fuji-like stratovolcano, perhaps 20,000 feet high, that blew its top during the eruption. Some well-educated guides in the area still promote this folklore, including a corollary that Little Black Mesa on San Ildefonso land was the peak of this ancient volcano landing upside down in its current location. Well, all of that would be wonderful if true, but unfortunately, the geology doesn't back this interpretation at all. 
though it is certainly true that we don't know the exact topography before the Toledo and Valles caldera eruptions, the older rocks that make up the caldera wall do tell us about the topographic trends leading into the caldera. Looking at the geologic map, you can see that Bandelier Tuff, both upper and lower, lead right up to the caldera boundary along the western and southwestern margin. Strip away this Bandelier Tuff, and it is clear that topography was subdued here at elevations of around 8,000 to 8,500 feet. Prior to the calderas, however, there was certainly a chain of volcanic peaks connecting Cerro Pelado to the south, currently 10,100 feet, and La Grulla to the north, approximately 10,500 feet. These now missing peaks were most likely of comparable elevation and possibly a bit higher, perhaps over 11,000 feet, before the Toledo and Valles caldera eruptions. The most likely candidate, however, for a lost high peak is in the Toledo embayment just northeast of the Valles caldera. It's clear that a large chunk of the Chacoma Highlands collapsed during the Toledo caldera eruption. The collective Chacoma volcanoes, represented by the dark green color on the map, mostly formed between 5 and 3 million years ago and include Chacoma Peak, now at 11,561 feet above sea level, the current highest elevation in the Jemez Mountains. This peak was certainly a bit higher and it's possible a sister peak or two also met or exceeded this elevation in the Toledo Embayment area. So my guess is that one or more Chacoma Peaks may have exceeded 12,000 feet before the Toledo caldera eruption, but I doubt that any peak exceeded 13,000 feet. Okay, it's time to finish our tour of the Valles caldera, so we might as well end with one last flight on Google Air. From our viewpoint at the caldera's west rim, let's gradually rise in altitude and pull back to get a full view of the southern half of the caldera. On the horizon, we can see the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. We will gradually travel east along the southern margin of the caldera until we get a full view of Valle Grande. As we continue to gain elevation, the names of the main ring fracture volcanoes will appear. Soon, the entire caldera will fill our view and we will once again drape exposures of bandolier tuff over the topography. Our final perspective will be looking to the northwest across the caldera with colored rocks of Ghost Ranch and the Colorado Plateau on the horizon. If you would like more information on the Jemez Mountains and the Valles Caldera, my roadside geology guide and map for the caldera is available through UNM Press. I also recommend a book by my colleague Fraser Goff, also with UNM Press, entitled Valles Caldera, A Geologic History. There is also a geologic guide and trail map I've published for Tent Rocks National Monument in the southern Jemez Mountains. Well, my buddy Javier and I thank you for taking this journey with us today, and we encourage you to continue exploring this crown jewel of New Mexico geology, the world's type example of a resurgent caldera, the Valles Caldera. <music>